Hi, welcome back to my vlog, Breaking the Tranquility of Solitude. I won't go into too much detail about where you can get that from, but you know it's Amazon. Uh, so when we left uh, Brody, he was incarcerated with his seven youthful alien allies. Uh, he searches his memory and comes up with a convoluted plot to try and blag an escape from their captors and bases this escape, remarkably enough, on an episode of Star Trek that for some reason he just happens to recall at that very moment. Now the success of this ruse impresses even the people who have incarcerated them and they subsequently realise that Evert was only using them with false promises. They leave their now new allies and head for a strangely named town called Langnord, which if you read the book you will find is an anagram of something. I won't go into any more details, I'm not going to spell it to you. Then they arrive, uh, they find that most of the inhabitants uh, of this strangely named town are dead or dying of some sort of plague, which is gripping the town. So Brody gets split from the group and he thinks he's found an ally, but he's then captured by a doppelganger of Charlie. Now this siren is ironically named Charlotte and turns out to be a local nurse who's been mentally subverted by Everett and she uses her powers that have been endowed upon her by him uh, and combines that with the remarkable physical similarity to Charlie to transfix and control him. Now once he's in her control she abuses him physically and sexually. She, uh, she drains his bodily fluids to a critical level on a daily basis and it's all to abate her inbuilt desire put there by Everett for his blood. Uh, this stops him alerting the seven, so he's in, stuck in this situation and the others have travelled back to the village where they were incarcerated before because they've been duped into thinking that Everett's gone back there. And when they get back there, their previous captors have all been murdered and they're subsequently tricked again into the same trap that they were once held captive in and now they're incarcerated again so can't go back to help uh, Brody, they don't even realise he's in any problem at this time. So Enfert's mental trickery aims to kill them all. Uh, Brody himself is at death's door, being held captive to the sexual exploits of this uh, Charlotte. Uh, but he doesn't contract the plague. Now that's, that's already nearly wiped out the rest of the town, but he doesn't seem to catch it, which again is something that will become more apparent at the reason why he doesn't catch it. Uh, in later instalments. Uh, this plague was obviously started by Charlotte's bloodlust and promiscuous sexual exploits. Uh, but a single survivor back at the village manages to release the Seven as soon as Everett leaves that area and they rush back to help Brody. And he's just about in time and he's about to succumb to Charlotte for one last time but they manage to uh, make an escape and they flee for refuge. So the Seven tell Brody that they've learnt that Everett's new collaboration with a local Native American Indian tribe and a chief there, and they plan to try to speak to this man, as they believe that he's not sympathetic to Everett's evil intent and may have found a way to resist the mind control that's been causing all the problems all along. So that's getting us sort of a little bit further and deeper into the plot. It does become a little bit backwards and forwards and complicated with lots of different references. So I hope you stick with it and I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, if you want to read it in more detail uh, properly instead of my garble, it's www.edjpublishing.com or find it as Breaking the Tranquility of Solitude on Amazon. Thanks very much for looking and I'll see you next week. Cheers then. Bye bye.